Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Melissa Crafter and I create custom epoxy free tumblers along with other crafts. In this week's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this custom acrylic event sign. These type of acrylic signs can be used for any type of event, whether it's a quinceanera sign like this one, a wedding sign, or a baby shower. To make the decal for my sign, I use my Cricut Explore Air 2 and Tech Wrap Vinyl. In this video, I'm going to be going through the entire process on how to make this type of acrylic signs. So if that is something that you're interested in, please continue watching. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Before we begin, I want to talk about the acrylic sheet. I usually purchase my acrylic sheets from Amazon, but I did purchase this one in specific from Home Depot. This one is a 20 by 32 acrylic sheet. You can find acrylic sheets at any hardware store and also at craft stores. I'm going to link this Home Depot one down below in the video description, and I'm also going to link the Amazon ones that I usually order. Here we are on Cricut Design Space. I'm going to show you exactly how I made the decal for my acrylic sign. Here I already have my decal made. I'm going to show you step by step on how I make my decals. I'm going to move this one down to the side and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a shape on the left hand side where it says insert a shape. You're going to want to insert a square. I like to insert a square and size it the same size as my acrylic sheet. That way I have an idea of how my decal is going to look. Now that I have my square, I'm going to unlock it up here where I can resize. And then I'm going to resize it to 32 by 20, which is the size of my acrylic sheet. I'm going to change the color of the now rectangle to white just so that I can see better. Now that I have my rectangle here, I'm going to click on the left hand side where it says text and I'm going to insert a text and first do that welcome to part. The font that I'm using for this is Times New Roman. Right now I'm not focusing on the sizing of the text or whether it's centered or not. Um, I'm going to fix it later on. What I'm doing right now is just making sure that I insert all the text that I need. I clicked on text again to add the name. The font that I'm using for the name is Hello Valentica from thefont.com. Again, right now I'm not focusing on the sizing or if it's centered, just focusing on inserting all of my text. After adding the name, I'm going to click on text again and I'm going to insert the quinceanera wording. The font that I used for this was also Times New Roman. Now to add the accent on the letter N on the word quinceanera, I'm going to show you how I learned to do it. I am using a MacBook. It might look a little bit different if you're using another type of computer. The thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup the entire word on the right hand corner and then I'm going to delete the N that I already have there. Then I'm going to go on my font book. Now that I'm on my font book, I'm going to search for that specific font that I'm using, which is Times New Roman. In your font book, you can see all the extra special characters that come with each one of the fonts that you have. Once I find Times New Roman, I'm going to be looking for that N that has that accent on top. Once I find it, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to copy it. Now back on Cricut Design Space, I'm going to click on Paste. I'm going to move my rectangle for a second and I'm going to highlight the entire word and I'm going to group it back together. Then I'm going to click on Text and insert that last text, which would be the date. The font that I'm using for the date is also Times New Roman. Now that I have all the wording that I want, I'm going to focus on resizing and centering the text. To size my text, what I like to do is size each line of text to an even number for the width. That way I know I'm going to have the same amount of space on both sides of each line of text. 
For example, for the first line of text up at the top, the welcome to part, I sized it to 12 inches for the width. Being that my acrylic sign is 32 inches for the width, if I center it directly in the middle of my acrylic sheet, I'm going to have 10 inches of space on both sides of this first line of text. For the height of that first welcome to line, I did 2.5. For the height, I really don't focus on making it an even number. I mainly just focus on sizing it to a size where it's going to look good. A little bit up ahead, I'll show you how I space out each line of text to make sure that we have the same amount of space on the top and the bottom of your acrylic sheet. Now moving on to that second line of text, which is the name. I'm going to size this to 22 for the width and 7 for the height. Again, making sure that I have that even number for the width. That way I have the same amount of space on both sides of that line. For this third line of text, the quinceanera wording, I'm going to do 18 for the width and 2.5 for the height. For that fourth and final um, line of text, I'm going to do 20 for the width and 2.5 for the height. Now that I have my text the size that I want, I'm going to center it. To center it, I'm first going to remove all of the wording away from the rectangle that we inserted. I'm going to leave the welcome to part on top of the rectangle and I'm going to highlight both the rectangle and the wording, the welcome to, and I'm going to click on align up at the top and I'm going to click on centered. That's going to center the text directly in the middle of the rectangle. Now I'm going to press on my wording here to make sure that it is highlighted and pressing the upward arrow on my keyboard, I'm going to drag it all the way to the top of the rectangle here. It's still going to stay centered. Um, I'm going to drag it to where I feel that it looks good on the rectangle. I am now going to repeat these same steps for each line of text that I have here. I'm going to make sure that the line of text that I'm working on is highlighted along with the rectangle and I'm going to click on a line up at the top and I'm going to click on centered and then I'm going to use my upward or down downward arrow on my keyboard to drag that line of text to where it looks good on my rectangle. Now that I have all of my text centered, I like to make sure that I'm going to have the same amount of space on the top and the bottom of my entire decal. To do this, I'm going to highlight all of my text and I'm just going to look at the numbers here. For the width, I have 22 and for the height right now, I have 15.4. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to bring that 15.4 down to 15 inches. That way I know that I'm going to have 2.5 inches of space at the top and the bottom of my acrylic sheet once I place my decal down. So to make my entire decal 15 inches in height, I'm going to decrease the line space.
After decreasing that line space, you can see here now the height for my entire decal is 15 inches with the 22 inches for the width. Having my entire text highlighted, I'm going to click down at the bottom right corner. I'm going to click on weld to weld the entire decal together. By welding, it's going to make this entire thing one decal, but with Cricut Design Space, it's going to give us an error because we can't cut um, decals that are this big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice the decal in half. To do that, I'm going to click on the left-hand side where it says shapes, and I'm going to insert a square. I'm going to move my rectangle background down for now. I'm going to take that square that I inserted and I'm going to bring it on top of the bottom half of my decal. You want to click unlock to unlock the square up at the top where you can resize it. You want to unlock it that way you can cover the entire bottom part of your decal. I'm going to make sure the bottom half of my decal which is the third and fourth line of text is completely covered by the shape that I inserted. Now that I have that covered, I'm going to highlight my entire decal along with the shape that I inserted and I'm going to click on slice. It's going to separate the top half of the decal from the bottom half. Now that it's sliced, you can delete the remaining piece of the shape that you inserted. Now that it's sliced, you won't get that error message and you'll be able to cut this out using your Cricut machine. Now that I have my decal ready to go, I'm going to click make it and I'm going to send it off to my Cricut Explore Air 2 to cut out. You're going to need a 12 by 24 cutting mat if you are wanting to cut decals that are this big. So here's the vinyl that I'm going to be using. This is definitely one of my favorite gold vinyls. This vinyl is from Tech Wrap and it's their textured metallic adhesive vinyl in the color Champagne Gold. I use this vinyl in specific on most of my acrylic signs. On the Tech Wrap website, you'll find this vinyl along with a ton of quality vinyl, so definitely head over there and check them out. If you have a discount code with Tech Wrap, you can use promo code MelissaCrafter10 at checkout for 10% off of your order. I'll put the Tech Wrap website down below in the video description and I'll also put my discount code there. So here is my Cricut Explore Air 2 cutting out my decal. You can cut this type of vinyl with any type of cutting machine. Now that I have my decal cut out, I'm going to weed out the excess vinyl using my Tech Wrap weeding pen. All materials used in this video will be linked down below in the video description. I really like this weeding pen because it does have a sharp stainless steel tip that allows precise weeding down to the smallest detail. Now that I have all of my decal weeded out, I'm going to apply some transfer tape. The transfer tape that I'm using here is the yellow grid transfer tape from Tech Wrap. It is a strong grip transfer tape. I'm going to place a piece of it down and then using my squeegee, I'm going to press down on my transfer tape to make sure that my vinyl adheres on well to the transfer tape. I'm going to remove my decal from my cutting mat and I'm going to remove the backing from the transfer tape. And here I have this upper part of my decal ready to be placed on my acrylic sheet. So here I'm going to take another piece of transfer tape that is the same size as the bottom half of my decal. So 
So here I'm going to put my transfer tape on top of my bottom half of my decal using my squeegee to make sure that my vinyl is adhering on well to the transfer tape. I am then going to remove the backing and here is the bottom part of my decal ready to be placed on my acrylic sheet as well. So here I'm going to get ready to place my decal on my acrylic sheet. It does come with a protective sheet on it on both sides of the acrylic sheet to protect it from getting scratched prior to using it. I'm going to remove one which is where I will place my decal. I'm going to leave the one on the back on just to prevent it from getting scratched while I'm moving the acrylic sheet around while placing my decal. So now using measuring tape and a permanent marker, I'm going to make small marks to act as my guide for where I'm going to place my decal to make sure that I center it directly in the middle of my acrylic sheet. I'll remove these marks a little bit up ahead using some alcohol. This is where I'm going to be using the measurements that I was talking about when I was making my decal on Cricut Design Space. Since my entire decal was 15 inches in height, I'm going to make sure that I have 2.5 inches of space on the top and the bottom of my acrylic sheet. I'm going to do a couple of these marks with that 2.5 inches of space on the top and the bottom of my acrylic sheet. Here you can see how I did the little markings. They're just small markings so they can act as my guide as to where I'm going to place my decal down. Now I'm going to work on the space that I'm going to have on the left and the right hand side of my acrylic sheet. So for my first line of text, the welcome to part, as mentioned earlier, the width for that line is 12 inches. Since my acrylic sheet is 32 inches in width, I'm going to have 10 inches of space on both the right and left side. So I'm going to make 10 inch marks on both sides. My second line of text, that line was 22 inches in width, so I'm going to have a 5 inches of space on each side. So here I'm going to mark where my last line of text is going to go, which is the date. The width for that line is 20 inches, so I'm going to have 6 inches of space on each side of my acrylic sheet. Since my third line of text is attached to that last line of text, I didn't do any markings for that third line. So here I'm just writing where each line of text should go. So to make sure that I center this as centered as possible, I'm going to be using some parchment paper. I'm going to place the top half of my decal that already has the transfer tape on it on top of my parchment paper. The decal will not stick on to the parchment paper. I'm leaving a strip of the decal up at the top exposed without parchment paper underneath. The parchment paper is going to help us to be able to move our decal around until we find the correct placement. Once we find that correct placement, I'm going to adhere that exposed piece up at the top then lift up my decal, remove my parchment paper, and then adhere the rest of the decal onto the acrylic sheet. So here I'm lining up my decal according to the lines that I made earlier. So 
So here using my measuring tape, I'm just making sure that I'm going to have those 2.5 inches of space up at the top part of my acrylic sheet. So here, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to lift up my decal and then I'm going to remove my parchment paper and then I'm going to begin to adhere that entire piece of the top part of my decal onto my acrylic sheet. I'm using my tech wrap squeegee here to make sure that my decal adheres on well to the acrylic sheet. I am then going to remove my transfer tape. I am now going to add the bottom half of my decal. I'm going to apply this the same way. I'm going to be using my parchment paper, adding my decal on top of my parchment paper, and I am going to leave a piece of my decal exposed down at the bottom without parchment paper underneath. So here I'm just playing around with the placement, making sure that my decal aligns to the markings that I made earlier. That way I know that my decal is going to be centered. Here I'm using my measuring tape again to make sure and double check that I'm going to have the same amount of space on both sides of my decal before I commit to a certain spot. I am then going to remove my parchment paper and begin to adhere that bottom half of my decal onto my acrylic sheet. I am then going to remove the transfer tape Now going in with some alcohol and a napkin, I'm going to remove those markings that I made. Now that I have my decal on my acrylic sheet, I'm going to make the paint that I'm going to use as my background. Now I usually use acrylic paint from my local craft store, but I couldn't find the specific color that I was needing. So I'm going to make my own paint using Universal White and the Craftnik pigment from the Crystalac company. I use Universal White for my custom tumblers and I mix it with the Craftnik pigments to make my own base paint colors. So I thought this would be a great paint option for my acrylic sheet given that I couldn't find the paint color that I was needing. You could make any paint color with Universal White and the Craftnik pigments. The pigments come in eight different colors which you could mix into the Universal White to create your own paint colors. You can purchase Universal White and the Craftnik pigments at thecrystalaxstore.com. I'll link it down below in the video description. So I'm going to use this little container that I purchased at Dollar Tree to put an ounce of Universal White using this syringe. This recipe book comes with the Craftnik pigments, which tells you how many drops of each pigment to drop into your one ounce of Universal White to achieve each of the colors listed. Here are the two pigments that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using number five, which is a blue pigment, and number two, which is a red pigment. So I'm going to put an ounce of my Universal White into my little container here using my syringe. So I'm going to use the recipe book as a guide to make a color similar to this pink one here, except I'm going to add a little bit more of the blue pigment since I am going for a pink purple color. So here I'm going to add drops of the red and blue pigment until I achieve the color that I'm going for. I'm using a popsicle stick to mix in the pigments onto the universal white.
In total, I did about 20 drops of the red pigment and four or five drops of the blue pigment. Now that I have my paint, I'm going to bring back my sign here and I'm going to remove that protective sheet on the back side of my acrylic sheet. So here's the brush that I'm going to be using to add my paint. It is a three inch flat brush from Home Depot. I'll link it down below in the video description. So I'm going to add a little bit of paint onto the back of my acrylic sheet and with my brush, I'm going to begin to go back and forth and just kind of create that brush stroke effect. There's really no wrong or right way to do this. You kind of just add your paint in whatever pattern you want. What I like to do is just make sure that the center of my acrylic sheet is covered in paint and then I just drag out my brush to create that brush stroke effect. If you make any mistakes, you can wipe it off and then just fix it using more paint and your brush. And you can also always add a second coat of paint if you need. I do like to flip my acrylic sign around a couple times just to kind of see how it's turning out and then add more paint where I feel it needs more. After adding the paint onto my acrylic sheet, I am going to allow it to dry for a full 24 hours. And here is how my acrylic sign turned out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comment section, or you can also reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram name is melissacrafter00. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I do upload a new video every week. Thank you so much for watching.